All right. Cool. So this uh, video goes out to all those people who say, I don't need to go to church to be a good person. Of course you don't. Um, some other some other things they might say. Uh, I got a little list. Um, so a lot of times people will say, um, well, I don't know why I need to be Mormon because other churches, you know, you can feel good. Other other churches feel the same thing you feel or feel similar things to what you feel. Or I don't need to go to church to be a good person. I'm, I'm a good person. Or there's a lot of people outside the church that are good people. So what's the point of going to church? Um, of course, there are good people outside of the church. Of course, there are great people that are not Mormon. I'm positive that there are um, many valiant people that are searching for God that are that are not Mormon and that far exceed anything that I have done in my life or will ever hope to be. Um, that in and of itself doesn't negate our responsibility to go to church or to act in God's name. Um, a friend of mine was asking me this question. She had... Uh, decided to kind of go her own way for a bit and I had an analogy come to mind of of Spider-Man. So imagine this. Imagine Spider-Man, he's he's there and I, and I believe something similar to this happens in the Spider-Man movies, the trilogy or whatever it is, but anyways. So imagine Spider-Man sitting there and he sees an old lady and she's about to get hit by a car. And she's walking down the middle of the road, car's coming, speeding down the road and Spider-Man sees it coming. And what happens? So you have a couple of scenarios. You have A, Spider-Man, hurry and flips on his suit and goes over there, saves the lady. Um, B, he's he's too busy and you know he he'd really rather not, and and she dies. So let's say Spider-Man doesn't save her. Is it his fault that she dies? Is he accountable? Is he responsible for her death? Um, well, there's the, there's the great question. There's the subject of debate right there. Um, but assuming you have the power, you had the knowledge and the power of, of knowing how to save this woman's life, this lady's life, would you feel an obligation to do so? And very similarly, that is also why we go to church. That is why we testify of Christ. That is why we um, are bold and, and teach of him. It isn't because, um, you know, necessarily that that we we have to, but we feel we feel an obligation that that we've been given this gift, we've we've been given this knowledge and this responsibility to share with others. Um, similar to saving the life of the lady, um, we need to be saving the life of others. Can we, you know? Um, not get into our spidey suit and just stand idly by and, and watch her die? Uh, of course we could, uh, and many people do choose to do so. They might not realize that their inactivity or, or less activity is, is hindering the work from moving forward. They, they believe it's only affecting them and that they're good people and that they're fine where they are and they're still spiritual and they're still living you know, most of what the, the prophets teach. Um, but what they don't realize is that there are other people that are, are suffering because of, of them, because they're not there to fill their spirit, to fill their love, to fill their guidance and instruction. Um, we just had a baptism last week in our ward, a young boy who, who I feel got baptized largely due to the help and support of, of one of the ward members. And... Should that ward member have decided, you know, well, this is too much work. I don't want to. I don't want to help this young man anymore. I, I've got other things to do. I've got my wife and kids to take care of constantly, or whatever it may be. Um, that wouldn't have happened. But luckily for this young man, and 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 for for me as well, for being able to be a part of it. Um, Luckily, that wasn't the case. Luckily, this this man and this young man decided to to learn the gospel, to 
be baptized and the spirit that was felt there and subsequently um, when I was giving him the Holy Ghost it was like just pure revelation just flowing through and it was such a cool experience and I love I love those experiences when you just feel God speaking and it's fantastic which brings me to the next point um, God he does speak to people in other religions of course he does um, other religions can be healed through faith. Every, everything that God has established is bound by laws. Gravity, that's a law that, that is established by God. Um, if you just look at it, a purely scientific um, way of looking at things, everything is bound by laws. And the same goes with faith. Just because you're not a Mormon doesn't mean your faith isn't going to be worth something to God. Of course it's worth something. The priesthood power is real, and when someone is has faith and is given a priesthood blessing, that faith is only um, can be magnified, and that blessing can be um, strengthened through the extra added power of the priesthood. So, of course, other religions have truth. Of course, there's truth in Buddhism and mainstream Christianity and Islam and um, Judaism, there's truth there. There is. That's what draws people in, is the truth that is there. I personally have had many great spiritual experiences um, with the Bible and with other um, scripts, um, but specifically I've had a lot of spiritual experiences with the Bible. Um, I said that already. I've had a lot of spiritual experiences with the Book of Mormon and inside the, the LDS temple. And those are some of the things that really testify to me that, that this church is is true and has truth and the ability to draw us nearer to God than by any other means. And as I'm sure I'll say in many other videos, that ultimately comes down to the being willing to do whatever it is that God asks. That's the first and foremost. You need to have Moroni's promise. Moroni chapter 10 verses 3 through 5 tells us the equation, another one of these laws that helps us to draw near to God. We need to have faith in Christ, a real intent, meaning we intend to act on whatever the answer we receive. So um, let's say I ask, I asked you, I said, should I put this YouTube video up? And you said, no, I don't think you should. But I did anyway. But I didn't have the intent on a and on following through with what, what my question was to you. So we need to have faith in Christ. We need to believe in Christ. We need to believe that we can receive an answer. We need to have the real intent, um, meaning that we need to really intend to listen to God. And and if we have those two things, um, then miracles can happen. There's there's one other principle that that's in the scriptures in the Moroni 10 through 5, but I want you to find it yourself, so go look it up. I'll add a link in this video. Um, see if you can find it. And then tonight, sincerely pray and ask God for direction, asking if what I taught today is true, and listen to what he has to say. I'll leave that with you in his name, even Jesus Christ, amen.